We've been really clear and really transparent with our clients about some of the headwinds we're seeing, some of the challenges over the secular horizon. In terms of, of broader asset classes, sectors, you know, where are you most excited over the secular horizon to deploy capital? You know, clearly there's significant ongoing shock related to the virus situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's led to a tremendous amount of you know, pain out there in the economy, pain across uh, households. Uh, but it will lead to attractive opportunities given this volatility and given this stress. Uh, so within the corporate market, there will be sectors uh, impacted by this virus that will benefit from uh, a recovery that we anticipate over the next couple of years. Now within that opportunity set, um, there are areas that we've talked about now for several years that continue to look quite attractive. Uh, these tend to be areas that were negatively impacted by the last global financial crisis back in the 0809 period. These are sectors that were heavily regulated, sectors where there's been a high degree of conservatism from investors, rating agencies, other market participants. Uh, global housing markets are an example of that. The financial space, another example of sectors that had very strong initial conditions going into this period, and they're going to be key areas of focus for us. Within other areas of the credit markets, uh, we think you're gonna need to be much more cautious, much more careful. And I think this is where the opportunity to provide alpha through good old fashioned security selection mm -hmm. is gonna be even more significant. As we work our way through this period of heightened volatility, you're gonna see some unfortunate surprises uh, in terms of weakness across segments of the corporate credit space. Mm -hmm. But this will be an area of great focus to PIMCO mm -hmm. because it's gonna be one of the few scalable areas to provide incremental yield and return versus more traditional government bonds. Uh, within the emerging market sector, um, we uh, have a somewhat more mixed view. Um, we talked about uh, the strength or in anticipated growth strength across the Asia region. I think that has to be balanced by ongoing uncertainty regarding the U.S.-China relationship uh, where we expect uh, additional friction. But that's a region of the world where we have a favorable view. And in fact, several countries um, within the region may benefit uh, more directly from this tension between the U.S. and China going forward. Uh, then let me just touch on currencies um, you know, very quickly. Um, although from a tactical perspective, uh, we anticipate some dollar weakness over the next couple of years. Um, as we see this post-COVID recovery gain some traction, but over the secular horizon, we're not so sure that we're gonna see a sustained period of, of dollar weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent a tremendous amount of time uh, with our outside speakers uh, in our internal mm -hmm. discussions discussing the view on the dollar, and we think it's a little bit premature. When we look at the United States versus other developed regions of the world, from a growth uh, perspective, from a policy perspective, we don't yet see the conditions in place uh, that are gonna lead to a fundamental and sustained period of dollar weakness. Um, I think in a, another area that looks quite attractive on a relative basis will be opportunities within the private sectors of the market. And the simple reason for that is that they um, stand outside the direct areas of policy support. So central banks have been very, very aggressive, even here in this country, in supporting the public investment grade corporate credit markets. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the highest conviction opportunity that we see at the moment. We do, uh, the good news there is that we view this as a multi-year opportunity as well.